is one of the most toxic heavy metals. In fuels, it is not used in combustion, but that is when you know when you're burning the fuel in the vehicle, but is released into the atmosphere. It is one of the main sources of lead in the atmosphere in many uh, developing and transitional uh, countries. Um, and it is estimated, it was actually estimated to be responsible for about 90% of lead that is found in the atmosphere. Uh, the problem with the lead in petrol is that once it's released in the atmosphere, we inhale it, it's so it, it's airborne, it's found in the ambient air. Uh, we inhale it. Uh, it also settles in on the on the foods that we eat. Um, so it can be ingested um, uh, as well. So it finds its way into the, our, our bloodstream. And um, it was found to be one of the causes of, of increased uh, blood pressure, hypertension, risk of uh, heart cardiovascular diseases, and even premature death in uh, adults especially. It, it is quite harmful in children, uh, more specifically. Um, retarding their mental uh, development, uh, lowering their IQ, their, their intelligence, so robbing the children their future. And according to the World Health Organization, uh, it's estimated that 15 to 18 million children in developing countries suffer from permanent brain damage due to lead poisoning. the 1920s when you know the early vehicles were manufactured lead was found to be a relatively inexpensive way of increasing the octane rating the octane rating in a vehicle is what makes uh, the the engine operate more efficiently so uh, from the 1920s uh, lead was added into the fuels so it is actually added after the refining process and uh, from the 1950s the impact or the health uh, impacts of lead were already widespread. And that's why from the early 1970s, the US uh, was among the first countries actually to eliminate lead uh, in petrol because of the health impact. Um, when the Partnership for Clean Fuels and Vehicles was formed, in uh, the year 2002, during the World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg, uh, it was out of the realization that developing and transitional countries were still using, uh, especially Africa, were still using uh, lead in petrol, were still using you know, very high sulfur levels in fuels, and the vehicles were increasingly uh, becoming a, a major source of pollution in developing and transitional countries. So the Partnership for Clean Fuels and Vehicles, where uh, UNEP is a secretariat, uh, looked at what are the three cost-effective uh, measures that can be, can be introduced by developing countries that can you know, give quick um, benefits for health, quick benefits for the environment. And of course, lead was one of the main, main things that was identified. The sulfur levels in fuels, also uh, uh, very toxic. Uh, one of the main reasons, or one of the main contributors of uh, the small particles that are again harm harmful to health, and especially in the diesel. And then the third element was on the vehicle emission technologies. So developing countries needed to look at this. Um, so there was need to, you know, do trainings, to do research studies, to do uh, regional, sub-regional, national meetings, awareness raising campaigns, media campaigns. Uh, when it came to sensitization, um, we did uh, support uh, ministerial meetings, uh, some at, even at, at the UNEP headquarters that brought together, for example, the sub-Saharan African ministers from environment, from transport, from urban, uh, development to 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 bring this issue you know up into a priority then uh, we also at the same time also carried out training for pump attendants because we realized that you know the pump attendants in many of the countries 
when we started uh, dealing with uh, uh, talking about the issue of lead uh, face out in many of the countries they were using um, they were selling lead and then leaded petrol at, uh, in, at the same you know petrol station so the pump attendants did not know the difference so we did some trainings for 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 them to encourage the use of unleaded petrol the health impacts and then, you know, once they understood the, the health impacts, actually, most of them said, you know, when the car comes into the service station, we will, you know, direct the, or encourage the consumers uh, to, to fuel, you know, with unleaded petrol. So there was a lot of, you know, work that was done, especially on awareness, uh, on health impacts. We supported blood lead testing. In some of the countries, you know, before, like for Ghana, we did tests before the elimination of lead and after very high impacts. Some, for example, again, Ghana, you know, they also did the uh, blood lead testing for the refinery attendants, uh, the refinery staff. They also did for, you know, um, uh, uh, the police, the traffic police. Uh, for schools that are located along a uh, uh, roadside and they really found high blood lead levels and that was one of the reasons uh, they eliminated. So awareness is one of the reasons. Then the other thing I would say is a uh, refinery upgrading. For the countries that did not have refineries, it was easier to move to unleaded. You know, with awareness, it was just an issue of standards uh, setting and they would be able to import unleaded. But some of the countries that had the uh, refineries it was a major issue because they had to change their configurations. So some of the countries, the last countries, you know, Yemen, Iraq, we could not go to those countries, but we could invite the officials to other countries. Like for Iraq, we held the um, decision makers or sensitization meetings in Jordan. So, you know, we could not travel to those countries, but we did invite them to other sessions where we could actually you know, uh, discuss with them uh, the issue of lead uh, elimination. So with Algeria now having faced out uh, in July, the use of leaded petrol, you know, that's the last country. So when we started, we had over 80 countries that were still using lead in petrol. Uh, so now lead is uh, globally eliminated, a major, major achievement. Um, we still, we see that now, you know, with this uh, achievement, uh, other forms of lead uh, are now being addressed, lead in paints. Uh, we're also uh, looking uh, as you know, you know uh, lead in batteries, how it's extracted as well, the impact. So it has actually propelled to look at all the other forms of lead. Looking forward, uh, especially when it, it comes to low carbon transport, uh, we need to look at transport in a holistic uh, manner, uh, you know, for environment, as I said, and for health reasons. So apart from the fuels, apart from the, you know, uh, cleaner vehicles, we also need to look at, you know, how do we move people more efficiently? Public transport, uh, is our transport clean uh, and as efficient as possible? Um, and also we need to look at the non-motorized transport. How do we also promote walking and cycling uh, for short distances? UNEP, you know, or UN has the convening power to bring uh, stakeholders that would not otherwise have met uh, to reach a win-win solution.